thing I like about Lovecraft, and maybe um, I'll definitely let Mark expand on it, um, is that the horror in it is more than just the monsters, you know, and the magic. So there's yeah. the the magic is like compared to compared to the real horror of racism. <laughs> yes, the real horror is okay. So if you hadn't seen this scene, I don't know from the first episode where they're out in the woods and these racist sheriffs have shotguns to their back and are about to kill them. Right. And these shogoths pop out and basically save their lives or they didn't save their lives, but they're, you know, distracted them enough to get away. You know, right. I'm more afraid of these cops with the guns right. than these monsters in the dark. Exactly. <laughs> right. There is a, so many things in this show that are like horrifying and they have nothing to do with anything supernatural. It's just scary as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I wanted to talk about that. What, um, what horror does for the black community in a sense, like, because I didn't even think of it this way when I started watching some of the videos that there's so much in the experience of being black in America that is frightening that horror itself yeah. can actually help you deal with uh, fear, right? Like if you experience fear in a safe space in your living room, you know, when mm -hmm. that situation comes up, right. like you're, uh, I, you know, I've had that situation. Everyone's probably had that situation where you're down the road and get pulled over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You don't know what's about to happen and you got to deal with that fear, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Horror has a way of like training us to deal with fear, right? In a certain way. You know, when Get Out was released, um, it was the, resurgence of black horror it was like yeah because it was done in a way where it wasn't trying to um copy a white counterpart it was jordan peele giving this horror story wrapped yeah. around racism and stuff like that and yeah. it it just it popped it just gave a it gave a new avenue for horror to be um explored but black horror has always been here it's been here mostly in um um, narrative form in like books and novels right. stories from a black lens certain things stick out that somebody right. white might not have picked up on so with Lovecraft Country which is ironically written by a white man the book is written by a white man named Matt Ruff um, I finished the book I, I actually started reading the book a long time ago but I never finished it um, mm -hmm. but when the show got because I knew when I, uh, I knew about the book when they announced the show. So when I saw it was behind the show, I'm like, oh, they're going to take this and just, you know, it's going to make, it's going to be authentic, if you get what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And not saying that Matt Ruff didn't do some good characterization. It's just like he gave a framework and Misha Green and her team sat there and made it flesh. You know, mm -hmm. right. and they put a soul into it and they went on stuff like black experiences that they can, you know, relate to and had, you know, it, it enhanced the nuances in the show. Because certain things that some it might go over a white person's head, black mm -hmm. parents was yeah. a, you know, a science fiction. Um, it's a Marvel movie, but at the end, at, at, at the essence, it's an Afro futuristic tale, even though we all know the Stanley created Black Panther, but again, you put in the hand of Ryan Coogler and his group and his the writers and stuff, and it enhanced it. And so with the combination of Get Out and Black Panther, you put them together and you get this representation of Afrofuturism, every aspect of it on screen. Mm -hmm. And that's why before we you know went on hiatus, which is why I was so wanting Black Panther to be a success a success because I knew with that quality with any caliber of you know of actors actresses um, storytelling behind it is going to open up doors for a lot of narratives that I've been dying to see be put on screen. Black people in situations that are not you know of the of the norm and what is expected of us. When it's not a hood movie. It's not a um what you call it a um historical piece it's not yeah you know it's not some drama about baby mamas and you know all this it's us doing extraordinary things and being extraordinary people and it's just 
This yeah. is why. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with those movies. It's just like I would like to have more, you know, right? Because there's so much more, right? Right. But, like I, yeah. I remember having the. the com- Go ahead. I'm sorry. Not in any kind of slave movies. They felt like if I see another movie about. I was just about to bring that up. That's exactly <laughs> where I'm going. Yeah. Like, I made an exception for Twelve Years a Slave, but I'm I'm pretty much done. Or there are certain horror films that I cannot get into because they they have so much excessive violence in them. Just like I don't, I don't necessarily want to see that. It's like, right. The slasher films, the the saws of the world. <laughs> Wait, I'm good. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I get what you're saying because that's yeah. you brought that yeah. up, Malcolm. Because I love yeah. horror, and people look at me like, well, you like. Yeah, I, yeah I, I watch anything, whether it's bad or good. But there's some stuff that you really like, you know, do I really want to waste my time because it is my time is valuable. So yeah. it's like I always tell people that a good horror movie is something that will like um, something that you can't explain. Right. And I think that's kind of like why I, there's certain horror fans out there who wants everything explained to them, mm. like they want everything like told yeah. to them. And us terrified me because it was like mm. there were, you didn't know where these see when you don't know where something come from that something that's chasing you coming from it 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 it, it, it enhances that fear you somebody coming in after you you're not <laughs> concerned about why are you doing this and oh my god where you come from you're gonna be trying to figure out how to survive and exactly that's the essence of um black with black but with black horror it comes in where it's like we are just taking the everyday horrors of being a black person in America and just expounding upon it in a horror and uh, with horror tropes and whatnot. So, yeah. Love Country was like the epitome of black horror because it took the Jim Crow era. Yeah, and if you, yep. book, if you and, uh, it took the Jim Crow era, and if you read the book, you can it, it, it it's like the the book and the and the show complement each other very very well. Yeah. Just throwing in black characters into a story, and you know, making them culturally maybe they are culturally accurate, but their stories, they're they're the fact that they're black have nothing to do with the story. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. They're there. I'm glad the representation is there. Right. But honestly, he could have been a white guy, and the story had not changed that much. Right. right. Know, it just would have been. Love Cat Country couldn't have been a white cast. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's nothing about this, right? You know, right? You can't tell these stories with white people because it's it's uniquely black, right? Um, it's uniquely American, I think, also, right? Because the story of racism is a uniquely American story, and I think uh, hopefully people will get to that point where the shame of the way that black people have been treated, they can at least realize like uh, this is some of the more unique stories that Americans have to tell, mm-hmm. whether it makes you uncomfortable or not. Like this haunted house, you know, you put a black family on a haunted house yeah. and then, you know, they, those type of stories can be told, but I feel like Lovecraft country came at a time where after, like we said, a black last matter movie this summer. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you look at Lovecraft Country, it was, it was set in 1950, 55, 56, but it was mm-hmm. so relevant to what's going on today, which is a which is telling of itself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because this is set back then, and they're dealing with this, the same shit that we're dealing with today. So how far have we came? Was yeah. America never great? You know what I'm saying? So this is showing you that America was never great. So yeah. um, especially black people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that, especially when each episode came out, because they came out on time. When the Breonna Taylor verdict came out for the the cops, that mm-hmm. week I believe that was the weekend that either I am the episode where Hippolyta ventured into mm-hmm. the deer, you know, and she was just talking about being a black woman in America. Yeah. Right. Verdict was read, I believe, that Tuesday or Wednesday, and then that Sunday the episode would hit, and it was just like a, a bomb to a open wound. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, are there more comments? Yeah, let me yeah. click on something. Oh, uh, that's not him, but I'm, I'm sorry, but hi guys, I'm so surprised you guys are back. I've been waiting a long time for y'all to return. Welcome back. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Glad y'all came back. You know, you know. So thank y'all for that. All right. and, and, yeah, me and my baby August watching y'all. Okay, Wilson, I got let me. 
getting my pint. I'm getting my pint tea because I told you about being a home record. You said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was saying, uh, Love Cap Country just knew it just kept putting out episodes and they just kept being like food to the soul, to the black soul. And yeah. um, and then also, spoiler alert for those yeah. that the book, but the whole um, black homosexual um, aspect of Love Cap Country, the television show, is not in the book. Mm-hmm. And oh, really? it's not. And it is, but the way Misha introduced it into the show is amazing because yeah. with the character that you see in the book of Montrose, he's very hyper masculine, which is not a problem. I want somebody told me that masculinity is not the problem, it's just the fact that um, hyper masculinity is not the problem, but it's just the fact that we we so many men hide behind it, yeah, and yeah. it's the it, they let it define who they are. They can't be, you know, you can be masculine, but you can also, you know, have a moment to cry or something like that or just to be weak. It's okay to be right. weak. You know what I'm saying? Right. But Montrose was just straight burn the whole entire time. Um, <laughs> right. You know, it was just like, oh, I hope you guys will come back because I miss watching you guys. Oh, we'll get into oh, that. Two or three minutes. So, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just that, that that but the way Misha Green introduced homosexuality and the fact that she chose to represent all aspects of the black community, you know, yeah. that's another thing that I that I've been trying to do since I've been away is trying to, you know, say that you know black, being black and gay. Has not been something that was just started in the nineteen seventies and was something sixties. Being black and gay has been here since the beginning of time. So, and, and our our um our representation of horror has been there, even though it's been mostly in the background or a side character. We've been there, and it's mostly the black gay narr- It's mostly black gay creators that's creating some of this black horror that you're seeing. If they're not yeah. doing you know, now, if they're not doing it now, then they've probably done some in the past. Uh, for instance, the guy who wrote Final Destination, you know, Jeffrey Reddick, he's gay. And um, he's, I, I, uh, shout out to Berea College. I know him. Name dropping, you know, is, yeah. is your foot hurt? Or you're just name dropping like that. Laura <laughs> 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 has all. That's what I, that's such an LA joke, I guess. I'm sorry. Let's say <laughs> people people love to say who they know who's famous. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> Halloween Four. One of the one of the best um, sequels in the Halloween Four was written by a black man. So me, yeah, it, black people have always contributed to horror in some shape, way, or form, and so it's just great for us to be able to tell our stories now. Yeah, we right. called "Don't Look Back." Which is it looks like it's probably what he wanted to do, but you yeah. know you got studio intervention. It's, you got all these white characters and stuff like that. And just imagine hitting Black Final Destination with a uh, black cast. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like everybody been like, "Oh shit!" But I'm not going to do this. It's just the fact that you can still be a black person in the horror film and not be a uh, stereotype. Right. So, right. Okay, Wilson says, "Why is the Harry one the only guy showing cleavage?" Here he go with this cleavage shit. Yeah. <laughs> Here he goes with this cleave. We are officially back because Wilson has come in on my damn chest, so or my chesticles, as I call it. But black horror is wonderful. It's 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 a great thing. And like I said, um, if you haven't had a chance to go out, go pick up Robert. Um, 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 Robin R. Means Coleman's Horror Noir. This is the book. It's like the Bible for everybody who wants to learn about Black Horror. So yeah. the history of Black Horror. You need to get the yeah. book. On to, like, this, I haven't been all the way through it, but it's, it's really a textbook, but it's like mm-hmm. I jump into different avenues of the centuries, of the, century, of the decades, where she jumps in and talks about different aspects of the decades of Black Horror. So yeah. um, yeah, you know, like Abby from um, that was like the black version of the Exodus with 
Abby, Abby right here. And this is Sugar Hill. Yeah. Um, these are black films that came out in the in the um, 70s that featured wow. black cast and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it just, but they was problematic, but, you know, still. Yeah, 